So then let's talk about what's called ingress and egress. What ingress and egress is, is how a person turns into or turns out of the parking lot of a restaurant. Okay? It's amazing, but if there is a curb cut at the right location, people will pull in. And if there isn't, they won't turn around. Okay, whoever tells you that people aren't lazy, mm -hmm. the curb cut could literally be 30 feet away, and they got to do a U-turn, and it only takes them this, their driving wheel. And then they do the U-turn, and they're right at your parking lot, but they won't do it. So the ingress and egress of the location is critical. How far away you are from the stop signs. If you have a stop sign, if your building's here and you got stop signs here, and this is two buildings off, you may have a problem. Because literally, these cars might block up here, and therefore you won't get business because they won't cross over. So the ingress and egress of your property is critical. In the old days, do you know how we used to do that? We basically used to go to the place where the building was projected to be. And we stood there and we looked down one way and then we looked down another way. And then we got in our car and we drove around each of the stop signs and we literally pulled in, pulled out, pulled in, pulled out till you figure out whether or not you could get in there. Okay, but now site selection is all about demographics, psychographics, traffic, count. You'd be amazed the number of site selectors never ran a restaurant never looked at aerial views, never actually physically walked the property, looked in both directions. What they're wanting to tell you is there's 47,000 cars that drive by here. This is either a good or a bad location. Okay, but what if the people in the cars are the wrong type of customers? They can tell you all the demographics they want. What they don't tell you is when they're sitting here looking at numbers, they're telling you, what percentage of this is male, female, black, white, green, purple, orange, tall, short, with or without money? What they're trying to tell you is data. And you know there's no better way that, to find out other than standing at the location and watch. I can see kids going by. I can see a lot of BMWs. I know what that means. I can see a lot of older model vehicles. I know what that means. I can see a lot of minivans. I know what that means. You got to do it on the ground watching. The data I got to have too. The data I got to sit and go, okay, Mr. or Miss commercial real estate person, tell me what it means. Okay, great. I got it. It's all free. By the way, in this day and age of technology, you can get all of that data by yourself too. You can just easily plenty of websites. Literally download it, collect your information. It's crazy. But what's going to decide success or failure with a site is going to come down to the art of site selection. The process of determining how a mammal consumes, where they consume, the time of day they consume, who's around you and who's not, in this industry, having competitors near you is good, not bad. Because see, what I want to be as an independent, what I want to be is in a position to out-operate you. I want you sitting right next to me. You want to see a successful restaurant? You take a high-volume McDonald's and you put it on one side of me. You take a high-volume Taco Bell and you put it on the other side of me. You take a high volume casual dining, put it on another side of me. High volume fine dining, you put it on another side of me. And I'm going to make a ton of money. It will be crazy. And see, most people don't think in those terms. They think if they're all high volume, there's no way I could be. It's the exact opposite. If they're all high volume, unless you're a dolt 
there's almost no way you couldn't be a high volume. You're going to want to out operate them right at the point of contact where the customer is coming. Does that make sense?